what's happening, everybody? My name is Josh Holland. Thanks for tuning in. I'm here with my buddy Nick Salcedo. We're trainers here in New York City. Uh, we work out at the Core Club. Um, the goal for this live stream is to kind of give you a sneak peek, we'll call this exclusive content, on kind of what I do with a few of my private clients and my group classes. So what we're gonna address here is a proper way to warm up. Uh, a few tips to start off is, is I always think about sleep and recovery so that we have a good, healthy system that we can move and also to remember to stay hydrated. It's very, very essential. So um, we're gonna start now with a warm up so that by the time we get to this movement analysis pattern at the end of the warm up, uh, we will be able to determine how well he moves. So this is for clients, this is for trainers, this is for anybody that's looking to enhance movement quality, all right? So first, we're gonna start with a warm up. I wanna take Nick through moving every part of his body. So we're gonna start with arm swings. Feel free to follow along at home. Um, you can obviously sit there and watch it on the computer. At the same time, we want you guys to follow along and kind of learn some of the things that we're doing today. This will determine how well you move and how you can progress throughout your, your fitness journey. All right, let's go reverse. Now, as we move, I always ask that clients and, and trainers that we're a bit more mindful about our movement quality. So as he's moving, I want him to think about opening up the chest and shoulders, squeezing his shoulder blades together throughout this entire range of motion. Very good. Now let's open and close the chest. Very good. Once again, <clears throat> Nick is focusing on really being mindful of every part of this movement. Externally rotating at the shoulders, opening the chest. This is a good idea to do regardless of what movement we're gonna do because the chest, the shoulders, the entire kinetic chain is involved in movement. Great. <clears throat> Next, we're gonna go into hip rotation. So place those hands on your hips, feet straight forward, legs straight. We're gonna start rotating. I call this the slow motion hula hoop. We're gonna hit every part of this circle. Now some of you at home or in these classes, you may feel a little of a hiccup, a little bit of a hiccup in parts of this circle. I want you to work through that slowly and then start to grow the speed, all right? And you can also change directions. So the goal is to go here, hit every part of the motion. Notice that we're also hip hinging at the side here. So I'm learning how to hip hinge, keeping a nice, good rotation. This also starts to wake up the brain because we're having to be coordinated. Right? Sometimes that's a little bit difficult for people to do, to be coordinated, right? Okay, after hip rotations, we're now gonna go leg swings with the arms. So you're gonna swing the right leg up with your left arm forward and then swing way back, trying to keep that leg straight. Why is this important? Well, here we're also focusing on balance, shifting of the ankle. The ankle and the lower body provides a lot of stability in this move. We're also really working the body and we got some good contralateral movement going. Great, we do about 10 reps on that side. Let's go to the other side, good. One thing I like to notate also, as Nick is going through this, Nick is a, is a trainer as well, so he's very well versed in movement. And as you can see, when he starts some of these movements, he starts off a little bit shaky, and then as he progresses, he gets a little bit better, and that's the goal. This is not like functional movement screen, FMS, where if you move your foot, uh, you're deducted a point, or you know that's a, a failed performance. No, here we're trying to enhance movement and teach the body how to adjust, okay? All right, next. One of my favorites, I call this the airplane leg swing. So our arms are out to the side, and I want you to swing your right leg, touch your left hand, and immediately open up, touch the right hand. So this is a, a drill in closing and opening the hips. So it's gonna look like this. Swing, swing, keeping your balance. We're gonna repeat that a few times. Good, nice, that's one. <clears throat> Once again, closing and opening of the hips. So the leg crosses the body, opens up, good. That's three, let's do two more. Good, four, <clears throat> one more, good, and five. Now, before we started this live stream, <laughs> Nick was a little, little shaky. I wish we had some of that footage, but it's okay, because he's doing it very well now. So we're gonna go to the left leg. Once again, swing, swing, good. If you can, try to do a few reps without touching the ground. Swing, swing, again, swing, swing, good. Also, the goal is not to drop the hands, okay? Great job. Now, to continue a little bit more into this warm up, also notice, look, Nick is sweating, I'm sweating a little bit. This is just the beginning, right? So, we're gonna do jumping jacks. Let's do about 15, 20 reps here. 
As a trainer, that's a private trainer, also a group class instructor, when someone starts to move, especially through a warm up, this allows me to, to understand what kind of person I'm dealing with. So if I see his legs are turning out with his, with his jumping jacks, or his knees are caving in in his jumping jacks, chances are that's gonna also be true in some of the other movements that we're doing, okay? So I'm mindful of that as well. Next, last but not least, we're gonna go running in place and we'll progress to high knees. So let's just do a few reps of that. Once again, I'm watching to make sure everything is tracking properly. Good, he's up nice and tall. He's got a good four foot strike and a slight tap of the heel down. Relaxing the shoulders and now we're gonna pick it up to high knees. Let's go, high knees. Good, and relax. Perfect. So, now that Nick is warm, warmed up, we're not gonna take him through what I call movement analysis pattern. So, I used to call this a squat assessment and I would have five moves to determine how good is your squat and other parts of your body, how well it can move throughout a movement. I believe that the foundation of movement is a good, true deep squat. So, let's start with a deep squat. This is step one. We're gonna go all the way down with your feet straight forward, elbows inside the knees, and a good bit of midline stabilization throughout the back, okay? So, from the front view, notice that Nick's feet are straight forward, very good. Knees are pressed out with a little bit of an assist from the elbows, pressing those knees out. Good. His back is very flat. This is, this is exactly what we want. Some of you at home who are trying this, you may think, yeah, but Nick is a trainer, he should know what to do. Okay. If your heels lift out of this position, chances are you have what we call an ankle blockage. So sometimes what I'll do is, go ahead and stand up, Nick. Sometimes what I'll do <clears throat> is grab like a pole, a bar, to allow for more of a heel lift. So let's go down, let's pretend like you can't do that. <clears throat> let's put you in that heel lift. Good, and go down into that squat again, deep squat. For some of you at home, if you could not do this at first, try doing it with the heel lift and you will see, you should see a difference. What that tells me is you have an ankle blockage, not necessarily anything wrong with the, the knees and hips. Not to say that it's 100% true, no problem, but this usually is what we call ankle blockage. Okay, so we'll take this away because Nick can do that, great. Now, let's go into step two. So that was step one, here we go, step two. My goal throughout this pattern is if, can you do step one? Yes, okay, move on to step two. Step two is arms straight forward with your thumbs up. In this position, I wanna make sure that your shoulders are back in the shoulder girdle. That tells me that you can actively uh, engage the upper back, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Also, thumbs up shows that you have a good amount of external rotation at the shoulders. Very good. So, FMS has been great. The functional movement screen has been a good tool for most of us in the fitness industry. The problem is though, as we talked about, the problem is, is that you can't do it everywhere, right? So if we both are certified in FMS, great, but sometimes it requires you to carry this kit, this dowel, this thing to measure this and that. How about, can you do step one through 10 effectively? If so, great, you're ready to move. That's how it works in my book. I think Nick believes in it as well, okay? As you guys can see, we're both sweating. <laughs> I've only done half of the movement. Now we're gonna do more. Here we go, so we're gonna go through the 10 step MAP. We're gonna go through it again rather quickly this time. Step one, good. Step two, good. Step three, good. Step four, good. Step five, great. Step six, step seven, rotate. Step eight, step nine, step 10. Beautiful. All right, another round. Nick's gonna do it by himself. Follow along at home. See if you can hit every point of this. One, two, three, four, five, six, rotate. Seven, eight, nine, good jump, 10. We're gonna do two more rounds a little bit quicker. Follow along at home. Send us a video at home if you're doing this so that I can help maybe assess you at home, okay? Here we go. Step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got one more round. If you guys have noticed, like I've noticed, Nick has gotten better since we started this. <laughs> Go. One, nice and quick. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
Eight, nine, and 10. Breather, great job. Now, <clears throat> would he pass in coming to work out with me? Why, of course. <laughs> so this is what we look for. This is the quality of movement we look for. Do not be discouraged though. In this system here, we would never say, oh, you failed. No, there are instances though where maybe we would have to do some corrective exercises. So we're gonna go over that here in a little bit, but for now, that's the MAP movement analysis pattern. There's 10 steps to it. If you have questions, feel free to use the hashtag AskJosh. Um, continue to stay updated on kinetic.com because we'll be doing a lot more, okay? All right, hope you guys had a good time. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.